All right, so circle with center O, AB chord, AB represents the chord, OB represents the radius of the circle, right? And OM is the perpendicular from the center to the chord AB. I have told you, you can always, whenever we work uh, with circles, taking the perpendicular from the center to the chord is a default thing. Right. Even when we have to prove <coughs> our results, uh, taking the perpendicular from the center of the chord is a construction. So circle with center O, AB chord, OM is the perpendicular from the center to the chord. And by the theorem, the perpendicular from the center to the chord bisects the chord, which means M is the midpoint of AB. In other words, AM is equal to BM. The length of the chord AB is 16 centimeters. So AM is equal to BM is equal to 8 centimeters. And radius is 10 is given. Now, which line segment represents the radius OB, not OM? OM is not the radius. OB, the line segment OB represents the radius. So we have this right triangle OMB, right? Where MB is 8 centimeters, OB is 10 centimeters. So using Pythagoras theorem, you can find OM. And OM is the distance of the chord from the center. 
and that's what we have to find. Find the distance of the car from the center. So the distance of the car from the center is six centimeters. <clears throat> so we'll be now the three things in this figure are the three things in this figure are chord, chord AB. So half of the, so okay, we'll talk about the triangle, the right triangle OMB. We'll understand the sides of the right triangle OMB. We'll understand the sides of the right triangle OMB, what the sides stand for. Okay. Now the hypotenuse OB is the radius of the circle. So in the question, if you're given the radius, you should fill it there. The hypotenuse OB is the radius. MB, what does that side of the triangle represent? It represents half the length of the chord. MB of the triangle represents half the length of the chord. And what does the side OM represent? The distance of the chord from the center. <clears throat> so the three sides of this right triangle, the three sides, OM is the distance of the chord from the center. MB is half the length of the chord. OB, radius of the circle. So you will be given two things out of these three. You will be given any two. You will be given the distance from the center and radius. Then you have to find the length of the chord. You will find half the length of the chord using Pythagoras theorem. Double it to find the length of the chord. So any two will be given to you. We have three things in this right triangle. Okay, so any two will be given to you. You have to find the third one using Pythagoras theorem. So sometimes they'll give you the length of the chord and the distance of the chord from the center. Then you should find the radius of the circle. So given any two, you can find the third one using Pythagoras theorem. <clears throat> It's <laughs> me. Okay, so here two circles of radii 10 centimeters and 17 centimeters intersect at two points. So there are two intersecting circles. They intersect at two points. So the figures like this. Two circles of radii 10 centimeters and 17 centimeters intersect at two points. So the points of intersection are A and B. The two circles intersect at A and B. Uh, the center of the first circle is M. The center of the second circle is N. <clears throat> and the distance between the centers 
is represented by the line segment MN. MN represents the distance between the centers of the two circles. AM, a radius of the first circle. AN, center to any point on the circumference. Center to any point on the circumference is the radius. So MA, a radius of the first circle. NA, <clears throat> radius of the second circle. You can also join, see if you join MB, a radius of the first circle. NB, a radius of the second circle. We don't need that part of the figure. So we have not joined. We don't need that part of the figure. We don't have to join. Meaning, yeah, we don't have to join. <laughs> you can either join AM and AN or join BM and BN. You just want one triangle. You just want one triangle. <clears throat> Okay, and now in this triangle A M N A M N, we know that A M is ten, A N is seventeen, and M N is twenty one. What is M N? The distance between the centers twenty one. What is A M? Radius of the first circle. A N. Radius of the second circle. Now these three these three line segments they form a triangle. So let's find the area of this triangle using Heron's formula. Do that. <clears throat> I'm not doing the calculations. I'm going to write the answer straight away. You're going to tell me the area, and I'm going to write the answer straight away. Find the area of this triangle using Heron's formula. You calculate. I'm okay. Let me not write anything. I'm not working that. You tell me the answer. Eighty four centimeter square moon. Okay. Eighty four. So using Heron's formula, uh, using <clears throat> Heron's formula, area of triangle AMN is equal to 84 uh, centimeters square. <clears throat> now, there is a proper, there's a theorem which says that <clears throat> the line segment, the line segment joining the centers joining the centers is the perpendicular bisector perpendicular bisector of the common chord The line segment joining the centers, which is the line segment joining the centers, MN. That's the perpendicular bisector of the common chord.
So the line segment joining the centers MN is the perpendicular bisector of the common chord. The common chord is AB. Why is AB the common chord? Because AB is a chord to the first circle as well as the second circle. We can see that. <clears throat> Because the points A and B are the common points to the two circles. A, B, the points A and B lie on the circumference of the first circle and the second circle. So A, B is a chord common to both the circles. You can see A, B lies in the first circle. A, B also lies in the second circle. So the line segment joining the centers, M, N, is a perpendicular bisector of the common chord A, B. So M, N is the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector of AB. So we have 90 degrees here. And also it bisects AB. So AO is equal to OB. <coughs> AO is equal to OB. So now area of triangle AMN, AMN is equal to 84 by Heron's formula. So half into base MN into altitude AO. Now the question is, how do you know that it's 90? That's by the theorem. MN is the perpendicular bisector of AB. MN is the perpendicular bisector of AB. That means MN is perpendicular to AB. And MN bisects AB. MN is not bisected. MN is not bisected. MN cuts AB into two equal pieces. AB is cut into two equal pieces. That means AO is equal to OB. The chord is cut into two equal pieces. MN is not cut into two equal pieces. <clears throat> they don't bisect each other. MN bisects AB. Okay, so half into base, half into base MN into altitude AO is equal to 84. Half into 21 into AO is equal to 84. So AO is equal to 84 into 2 by 21. So AO is equal to 21 four times, so 8 centimeters. So AO is 8. So AB is equal to 2 into 8, 16 centimeters. So the length of the common chord is 16 centimeters. AB, therefore, AB is equal to 2 into A, 2 into 8, 16 centimeters. <clears throat> yeah, right on.
Holland. <clears throat> so first we need to find the area of the triangle using Heron's formula and use that area, equate that to half base into height. <clears throat> so you'll get half the length of the uh, chord. You'll get AO. AO is the altitude of the triangle. AO is the half the length of the chord AO is the altitude of the triangle AMN. So you can find AO and double it to find AB. Any questions, online students? Next one. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so the situation is this one circle, two parallel chords of length 30 centimeter and 16 centimeters. Two parallel chords of length 30 and 16 centimeters are drawn on opposite sides of the center of a circle of radius 17 centimeters. So see the figure circle with center O. Uh, the two <clears throat> the two uh, chords A, B, and C, D, where are they? They are on opposite sides of the center, right? One is above and one is below. Yes or no? Circle with center O, A, B, and C, D are the two parallel chords on the opposite sides of the center. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Circle with center O, A, B, and C, D are the two parallel chords on the opposite sides of the center. A, B is 30. So, yeah, O, M, and O, N are the perpendiculars from the center to the two chords. O, M, and O, N are the perpendiculars from the center to the two chords that we have to always take. Okay. OM is perpendicular to AB. We have to draw OM such that it's perpendicular to AB. Then <clears throat> ON, draw ON such that it's perpendicular to CD. And we know that the perpendicular from the center to the chord bisects the chord. The perpendicular from the center to the chord bisects the chord. So 30 becomes 15, 15, and 16 becomes 8, 8, meaning M is the midpoint of AB, N is the midpoint of CD. Now the radius of the circle is given. Where will you mark that? O, B, O, D. They represent the radius of the circle, right? The radius is 17. So O, B, 17. O, D also 17 because both the line segments represent the radius of the circle. Now the first part is to find the distance between the two chords. That is M, N. You need to find M, N, the length of the line segment M, N. Find the distance between the two chords. The distance between the two chords is MN. So we need to find OM from one right triangle, ON from the other right triangle, using both using Pythagoras theorem, and to find the distance between the two chords. Do that. <clears throat>
Uh, the next part of the question is to find the distance between the two cords if they are drawn on the same side of the center. If the two cords are drawn on the same side of the center. Is it done? Okay. So now they're drawn on the same side of the center. Miss, yeah. Miss, can you show the previous slide? One minute, all miss. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Done, Hari? Yes, Miss. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just understand the figure. 
So circle center O, both the chords A, B, and C, D, they lie on the same side of the center. They lie on the same side. Now the longer, longer the chord, closer it will be to the center. <clears throat> because as you keep going, the longest chord, which is the longest chord, the diameter. <clears throat> diameter is the longest chord. Right? Diameter is the longest chord. So longer the chord, closer it will be to the center. A B is 30 centimeters. C D is 16 centimeters. So A B will be closer to the center. You can make out, right? C D. Okay. Of these two parts, A B should be the longer one, no? You can also make out. Yes or no? Yeah. So A B, the longer part, A B will be closer to the center. So 30, 16. 30 will be closer to the center. 60 will be below it. So you can see A, B, and C, D. Then you can see the perpendicular from the center. O, M, and O, N. Exactly what we did here. O, M, and O, N. <clears throat> o, M is perpendicular. O, M is perpendicular to A, B. O, N is perpendicular to C, D. Then you should show the radius. You should uh, join the uh, points that show the radius, that represent radius. So center O to the point B, O, B radius. Center O to the point D, O, D radius. So you should first draw the circle with center O. Then take two line segments, A, B, and C, D chords. Then the perpendicular from the center to the two chords, O, M, and O, N. <clears throat> okay? And then the radius, O, B, O, D. Now mark whatever we have. So same thing, Pythagoras theorem. Uh, you have to find these two. And the question is to find the distance between the two chords. Which line segment represents the distance between the two chords? Mn. Mn represents the distance between the two chords. Mn. So Mn is On minus Om. So you should find On from one right triangle. O, On from one right triangle. Om from the other right triangle. Subtract to find Mn. All right? Good. your classroom.
the capacity of a closed cylindrical vessel the capacity of a closed cylindrical vessel of height 1 meter is 15.4 liters so the capacity is given in liters not in meter cube or centimeter cube <clears throat> now when cylinder so we have the radius and height in meter or centimeter right it's a cylinder now radius and height we will have either in meter or centimeter <clears throat> So volume will be in meter cube or centimeter cube, but here the volume or the capacity is given in liters. So you need to convert that to meter cube or centimeter cube using the suitable conversion. <clears throat> the question is, so what is given to you? The capacity or the volume of the cylinder is given to you. The height of the cylinder is given to you. With this, you have to find how much meter square of metal. That means how much area of metal. How much meter square means? Or they'll give how, how many square meters? Square meters means what area? So what area of metal sheet is needed to make it? What area of metal sheet is needed to make it is a question. <clears throat> and to find the area, what do you need? For a cylinder, what do you need? Radius and height. You need to know these two parameters. Only if you know the radius and height, you can answer the questions related to a cylinder. Height, you know. You don't know radius. Height, see, think like this. To answer this, it's a cylinder. To answer this question, that is to find the area, we need two values, radius and height. Height is given. Radius is not given. Then how will you find area? We can't find area. You need to find the radius first. So no point writing, uh, see, as a, what a, a area of metal sheet is equal to something. No point writing that. We don't have radius. <clears throat> so we need to first find radius. To find radius, some other information is given to you. What is given? Volume. Why should they give you volume? They need to give you what? Radius and height, no? To find area, they need to give you radius and height. Why have they given you height and volume? So they've given you this extra information, volume, to help you find the radius. So use that information, find the radius, and then find the area of metal sheet needed. So your first thing is to find the radius of the cylinder. <coughs> So we'll use this one, 1,000 liters. See, you can use this proportion. I've told you this. <clears throat> now, if we have a doubt as to, should I multiply, divide, divide by what, multiply by what, just you should remember the rule. What is the rule? What is the rule that connects liter and meter cubed? The capacity is in liter. You want to convert that to meter cube. Why meter cube? Because height is given in meter, no? So you want to find it in meters, right? The capacity which is given in liters, you want to convert that to meter cube. So there is a rule or a relation between liter and meter cube. 1,000 liters is 1 meter cube. So write it as a proportion like this. 1,000 liters is 1 meter cube. 15.4 liters is how many meter cube? See, right? <clears throat> liters and meter cube like this. The order is important. You know this? You understand what I've written? Or you can also write it like this, children. See, I think this will be better. You can write it straight away like this. One second, one second. I have written both the, you know, like conversions. We are using this one. You can write like this. Listen to this. 1000 liters by 1 meter cube is equal to 15.4 liters by x meter cube. There's also a way to convert. This is how we convert. 1000 liters by 1, 1 meter cube. What is that? 1000 liters is 1 meter cube. No, so write it like that. 1000 liter by 1 meter cube is equal to, in the numerator you've written liter, right? So there also you should write liters. 15.4 liters by x meter cube. You can write it like this. <clears throat> or you can also write, one meter cubed is 1000 liters. Then how many meter cube is 15.4 liters? Cross multiply. So X into 1000 
is equal to 15.4 into 1. So x is equal to 15.4 divided by 1000. So x is equal to 0 0.0154 <coughs> um, meter cube. Very simple. We have just converted liter to meter cube. That's all. Now we have the volume in meter cube. We have the height in the, uh, we have the height. What's the formula to find the volume? Pi r square h. Pi r square h is equal to 0 0.0154. H is known. So in the equation, pi r square h is equal to volume. You know volume, you know height. So you can find the radius. In that equation, there are three unknowns, right? Pi r square h is equal to volume. So r, h, and volume. Three unknowns we have. Of these three, we know two. Volume and height we know. So we can find radius. So find radius and then find the area of metal sheet needed. Good.
Got it? <clears throat> yeah, what's the radius? Seven. Seven meters. Okay, and uh, what's the expression to find the area? Huh? What is the expression? What's the formula to find the area? You have to find the area, no? You didn't find? Oh, do that. You can simplify this. <clears throat> so two seventy seven by five. So two is in <coughs> seven. Is in. So it'll be seven into seven by So where all you need a metal sheet? All over. It is closed. So total surface area. Yes. Yes. What's the formula? You do the simplification, no? Please. Two ones are two fifty times, then it will be eleven and twenty five. So eleven by twenty five into one hundred and seven by hundred. <clears throat> but write the final answer. You check if you're getting the same thing.
sorry online students yeah so we have r squared is uh, seven, 7 into 7 by 10000 so 10000 is 100 into 100 so 7 by 100 7 by 100 so r is equal to one of it. 7 by 100 we have two times so r is equal to 7 by 100 or 0 0.07 meters so we found the radius now find the tsa using the formula right Falling. Hey. Finished? Yeah, what's the value of X? Okay. Yeah, please try this and tell me the values of X and Y. X loud of X is okay and why?
Done, ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the value of x, Swati? 50 degrees, ma'am. X is 50, yeah? 5, 0. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And why? 130 degrees, ma'am. Very good. Correct. So for that, let's uh, mark this angle as A. So angle at the center is double the angle on the circumference. <clears throat> the angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the angle made by the same arc at any point on the remaining part of the circle. So using that theorem, A is equal to 2x. Center is double the angle on the circumference. A is equal to 2x. <clears throat> That's not a formula. So 100 is equal to 2x, x is 50. And then ACBD is cyclic. Opposite angles are supplementary. <clears throat> y is 130. We may not get, uh, you know, like whole numbers, maybe because I'm just writing some random frequencies. So we may not get whole numbers like for frequencies, but we're just trying to understand how to uh, prepare the table to make a histogram. All right. Don't make a history. You don't have to make construct the histogram. How will you prepare the table? Now, this table cannot, you cannot use this table to make the histogram. So you need to make some corrections. So I want you to make that, uh, you know, uh, uh, edited table. 
with the help of which you can make the histogram. So find the uh, you know corrected frequencies <clears throat> because we see that the class intervals uh, don't have a uniform size. A zero to five, the class width is five. Then five to twenty, it's fifteen. Twenty to forty, it's twenty. Then thirty. Correct. So the class intervals. Okay. To make a histogram, the class intervals have to be continuous. <clears throat> to make a histogram, the class intervals have to be continuous. The class intervals are continuous. To make a histogram, the class intervals must have a uniform class size. No, they don't have a uniform class size. They have to be continuous. Yes, it is continuous because 0 to 5, 5 to 20, 20 to 40, it's continuous. There's no gap. So it's continuous, but the other condition is that they should have a uniform size. No, they don't have a uniform size. So when they don't have a uniform size, we'll have to find something called the adjusted frequencies or the corrected frequencies, whatever your teacher calls it. Adjusted frequencies or the corrected frequencies or new frequencies, whatever. So how will you prepare? That's all you have to do. How will you find the new frequencies? So once you find the new frequencies, using the same class intervals, but the new frequencies will make the histogram. Using the same class intervals, but the new frequencies, you will make the histogram. Yeah, so I want the new frequencies. I told you ignore if you're not getting in the exam, your frequencies will be your whole numbers. Here, if you're not getting it, it's OK. Just write the fraction. I just want you to recall how to uh, convert the frequencies. <clears throat> That's all I want you to recall. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Okay, so the four terms we'll be using here are 
uh, original frequencies or the actual frequency, new frequency, uh, actual class size, new class size. Here we'll talk in terms of frequencies and class size and class size. For both, we'll say actual, actual and new. Actual, new. Actual class size, new class size. Actual frequency, new frequency or the adjusted frequency. Okay. Now, there are different uh, sizes, right? So, the, here the size is 5. Here the size is 15. Here the size is 20. You understand how to find the size? And here the size is what? 30. And what's the size here? 30. Which is the least size? 5. So we'll keep that. That least size. We'll take that as a common size for all. The least size is 5. Now see here. What's the, So the new frequency. What is the least size? Five. We want to take. We want to keep that as the base size. So the least size five. What is the size here in the first class interval five? So the same frequency will come. So what is the size here? Fifteen. What's the size here? Fifteen. So because the, this is also the same, you might get confused. I'll just change it because I can explain better. I'm just changing it so that I can explain. But otherwise, this 15 and that 15 will get confused. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just, I've just made it 30. So here the size is uh, 15. So see, it's like this. What is the, uh, what's the given frequency? 30. What is the given size? 15. What's the new frequency that you have to find? What's the new size? 5. You understand what I wrote? There are four things. Original class size, new class size. Original frequency, new frequency. Just write that ratio, that's all. And fill the values. Wait, I think I'll make it more easier. I'll make it easier to look. I think that will be better for you. The two terms are frequency and class size. Original frequency by uh, original class size is equal to new frequency by new class size. <coughs> original frequency, original frequency by or any, you can write original class size by original frequency also. You can even change the ratio. Okay, so original frequency, original class size is equal to new frequency by new class size. All right. Yeah. So what's the original frequency? What's for the second one? 30. What's the original class size? 15. What's the new frequency? I don't know. We have to find that. 5. What's the new class size? 5. 5. 5. So the new frequency would be 30 into 5 by 15. 10 is the new frequency. That's all. Just do this for everything and calculate the new frequencies. <clears throat> frequency and class size. Remember these two terms. Frequency, class size. Original frequency by original class size is equal to new frequency by new class size. So what you have to find here, that new frequency you have to find here, that new frequency, the others you will have to fill. Now do it. And the, and the new class size will be the smallest class size. The new class size will be the smallest class size. Please, all of you should do it correctly. This is rough work. You can just do this in the rough column and write the frequencies directly here. Or you can show the work for your teacher also. That's fine.
finished? That ratio, no, you can write any order. But the thing is, if you have class size in the new, you should have class size in the numerator and frequency in the denominator or frequency in the numerator and class size in the denominator. That ratio should write correctly. That's all. You can write new this side and old this side. Any ways you write, but that numerator denominator should maintain correctly. And remember that the two words class size frequency. These are the two terms class size frequency. And fix new old. New classes, new frequency, old classes, old frequency. So you can show the working like this. I've created another column to show the working. You can write the formula right on the top. Right on top, I've written the formula. And you can show the working also to your teacher like this. So with the help of the <coughs> with the help of these new frequencies, you should make the histogram. We'll roughly make the histogram now. All right. Okay. See ya. Ten. <coughs> Zero. <coughs> Zero to five, six, uh, six is the see the new frequency. Six, zero to five. Five is here. Five is here. Okay. So it is six. Correct. Zero. This is five. This is zero. Zero to five, the height is six. Then five to twenty, it is ten. The new frequency you must see. Uh, five to twenty, it is ten. 5 to 20, 5 to 20, it is 10. 5 to 20. Then uh, 20 to 40 is 4.5. 20 to 40 is 4.5. So this is 5. 4 to 6, between it is 5. Between 4 and 5 is 4.5. Frequency cannot be, uh, you know, like a uh, value like this. Just ignore it. We're just trying to understand how to make the, uh, you know, histogram. So this is 4.5 and that's uh, 20 to 40. 20 to 40. 40 to 74. Take the new frequencies, I said. Forget the old frequencies. 40 to 70 is 4. 40 to 74. So here is 4. <clears throat> 70 to 100 is 2. 70 to 100 is 2. 
this is the histogram and if we have to uh, show the frequency polygon in the same histogram if you have to show the frequency polygon just take the midpoints correct <clears throat> uh, does your teacher take imaginary class intervals before and after yeah okay so take imaginary class intervals before and after <clears throat> Now, uh, I'll tell you one more thing. Uh, they'll ask you to uh, make the frequency polygon using the histogram only for this, uh, um, you know, only if the uh, class intervals have a uniform class size. So ignore that here. <clears throat> only if the class intervals have a uniform class size, like 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, only then you can take imaginary class intervals before and after. Now it's difficult to take because with what size will you take imaginary class intervals? They will ask you to make the frequency polygon using the histogram only when the class intervals have a uniform size like 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. Because then you can take imaginary class intervals before and after with size 10. Before it will be 0 to minus 10. After it will be 70 to 80. You can take imaginary class intervals and uh, take the midpoints. So ignore it. <clears throat> but how to do is like this. Marking off the uh, midpoints and joining it. Correct? And then you would have taken a imaginary class interval. So you'll join it there. Here also you would have taken an imaginary class interval. And you have to join it like this. So this is the uh, frequency polygon using the histogram. See, we'll just assume that um, this one has a uniform class size, okay? Uh, 0 to 10, 10 to 20. So what you should do is before this 0 to minus 10, 0 to minus 10. So minus uh, 5, you should mark that point here. And after 100, so 100 to 110, okay, 110. So this is the midpoint. This is the midpoint. So you should join, you should join the midpoints. So this midpoint like this, because if the polygon node should be closed, it's a frequency polygon. So it should be closed with respect to the x-axis. So see, it's a poly this, this is the base of the polygon, this one. The x-axis is the base of the polygon. And you can, okay, see it goes like the polygon is, it's like this, goes like this. You understand? And then it's it's closed with respect to the x-axis. It's a frequency polygon. It's a polygon because it's made up of line segments and it's a closed figure. It's closed with respect to the x-axis. All right. Okay. Next question. Yeah, that's the next question. Find mode if median is 20 and mean is 35. Somebody's mic is enabled. Disable your mic. Online children, use the emoji, raise your hand. Sadhana, Sabarna, Abhishek, Swati, Aniruddha, Niveda, Krishna Priyan, Roshni, Haripanav, Anugraha. Very good. Thank you, children. Yeah, please answer this question. <clears throat>
Yeah, go down to. Oh, sorry. I corrected the value for uh, mean. Please uh, notice that. Note that. Ma'am, is it twelve? Well, yeah. Yeah, rewrote your uh, steps. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so there is something called the empirical relationship between mean, median and mode. Okay, so there is a formula that connects mean, median and mode. <clears throat> mode is equal to three median minus two mean. This is the this is called the empirical formula. Empirical formula. Empirical relationship, <clears throat> empirical formula or empirical relationship between the three measures of central tendency. Mean, median and mode are the three measures of central tendency. This is the empirical relationship, empirical meaning experimental. Experimental relationship between mean, median and mode. For, you know, like <clears throat> for uh, when when mean, median and mode were found for different sets of data. This relationship was noticed. This is how mean, median and mode behave. Mode is mostly three median minus two mean. See, for a frequency distribution, when you find mean, median and mode, they may not satisfy this relationship precisely, but they'll almost behave like this. <clears throat> OK, so I think that's enough for now. So this is called the empirical relationship between the three measures of the central tendency. Uh, mode is equal to three median minus two mean. Now use the values given three into median 20 minus two mean two into 24. So 60 minus 48, so 12. <laughs> so that means given any two, you can find the third one. Given any two, you can find the third one using this relationship.
Is the green light glowing there or no? No, right?
So, ABCD is only a quadrilateral. <clears throat> we'll have to show that it's a, we'll have to prove that it's a parallelogram. If uh, it's given that both the pairs of opposite angles are equal, if both the pairs of opposite angles are equal, then you should prove that it's a parallelogram. So, how do you prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? If both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. <laughs> If both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. And to prove that the opposite sides are parallel, we use uh, parallel lines, transversal, co-interior angles as supplementary. Okay, so you can see uh, angle A plus B plus C plus E is 360. But since opposite angles are equal, we have replaced. So you get, we have replaced C is A, D is B. So you get A plus B is equal to 180. Now look at the figure. What is A plus B is equal to 180? What does that mean? <clears throat> A plus B is equal to 180. So what is the result we have got? Co-interior angles are supplementary. Why are they co-interior angles? Because if you treat this as a transversal and these two as lines, these two as any two lines, and this one is a transversal, these are co-interior angles by the position. If you treat this one and this one as any two lines, intersected by this transversal, then angle A and angle B are pointer angles. And we have got the result that pointer angles are supplementary. When are they supplementary? Only if the lines are parallel. Therefore, AD is parallel to BC. Now use the same thing, A plus B is 180. <clears throat> Instead of A, you put C because A is equal to C, no? A is equal to C, opposite angle is equal. So in the same thing, A plus B is equal to 180. Instead of A, you put C. So you get a new result. <coughs> also, instead of B, you can put D. In A plus B is equal to 180. Instead of B, you can use D. So then you'll get A plus D is 180. That also will give you the same result. So if you look at <coughs> uh, what I have written here, C plus B is equal to 180. C plus B is 180. See this one. C plus B is 180. So CB is a transversal. 
and uh, these are the two lines. This one and this one. These are the two two lines. These are the two lines, and this is a transversal. Uh, Co-interior lines are supplementary. Then that means this line is parallel to this line. That is AB is parallel to DC. So like this, we have proved that both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So it's a parallel log. So ABCD is a parallel log. <clears throat> Finish writing. Okay. Yeah. In triangle ABC and triangle PQR, <clears throat> AB is equal to PQ, uh, AC is equal to PR, and altitude AM is equal to altitude PA. Show that the triangle is a congruent. Show this.
SS, huh? <coughs> Directly SS, you're saying like, come, come, show me. Yeah, online students. <coughs> okay. Now, do we have? We have only two pairs of equalities, right? <coughs> to show that ABC is uh, congruent to PQR, M AM is equal to PN. We cannot use. AM is equal to PN. AM and PN are not the sides of ABC and PQR. So that's given. But we cannot use that as an equality. We have only two. Side AB is equal to side PQ. That we can use. And AC is equal to PR. That also we can use. Because they are the sides of the triangles ABC and PQR. But AM is equal to PN. We cannot use. We can't say right. We can't write these three and say SSS. <coughs> You finished? Yeah. RHS then? Read. RHS? Okay, using RHS, what you got? What's the result you got? Okay, I'll see your book later. Fine, I'll see your book later. So we need to uh, do this proof in three steps, children. Now, consider this triangle and this triangle. <coughs> Consider these two triangles. Show that, see, we need one more pair of equality to show that these two triangles are congruent. We have two. We need one more. That one more, when you have S, S, that one more can be A or that one more can be S. So you have to find one more pair of equal angles or equal sides. If you find one pair of equal angles, then it will make SS. Equal sides, you will find it will be SSS. So you can do anything. Now, <clears throat> take up this triangle and this triangle. Okay, show that they are congruent. For that, do we have information? Yes, because it's given altitude. No, this is 90. So right angle, hypotenuse AB and PQ, and side AM and PN. <clears throat> In the two triangles, ABM, 
in the triangles ABM and PQN, what all we have? A uh, right angle. Right angle. We have angle one is equal to angle two, 90 degrees. The right angle is R. Okay, then we have H, which is H. AB is equal to PQ. Correct? That's H, right? That's the hypotenuse H. And then we have any side. Side AM is equal to the side PN. Side, that is side. So by RHS rule, these two triangles are congruent. So CPCT, <clears throat> you can write this angle equal to this angle. Or you can write this side BM is equal to QN. Anything you can write. If you want SSS, you should write uh, BM is equal to QN. If you want SAS, then you should say this angle, supposing 3. Angle 3 is equal to angle 4 CPCT. You can write angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Or you can write uh, BM is equal to QN. Now take up the other two triangles. Which one? Take up triangles AMC and triangle PNR. Now in these two triangles, angle uh, 5 is equal to angle 6, 90 degrees. Angle 5 is equal to angle 6, 90 degrees. So that is R. Okay, then H is. Hypotenuse AC is equal to hypotenuse PR. It's a given. And then some other side AM is equal to PN. That's a common side. For both the con uh, you know congruencies, we use this. So S. So now that these two, this triangle is congruent to this triangle, CPCT angle 7 is equal to angle 8. Angle 7 is equal to angle 8 CPCT. Or you can also write what? Mritsa or MC is equal to NR. MC is equal to NR. You can write this also. Now <clears throat> add angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Angle 7 is equal to angle 8. So what do you get? What is 3 plus 7? Angle A. Full angle A. Then 4 plus 8, angle 3. So now SAS, they are congruent. Or you can add these two. If you have written BM is equal to QN and uh, MC is equal to NR, when you add what you get, BM plus MC is BC equal to QN and NR is QR. You get BC is equal to QR. SSS. That will make SSS. So you will have to do this in three uh, steps, correct? So it's here. I worked it both the ways uh, using SAS and using uh, SSS. Do we understand this? You try to do it, uh, work this in your own way. Roughly finish it in your own way. Another two, three minutes while uh, we'll wind up the session. After this, you should take the triangle ABC PQR and SSS or SAS, they are congruent. Thank <laughs> you. 
करें So, 490. This is the question. It's 490. And then here, this question, 40 degrees is the answer. We will find this from X. So, 490 is the X and the 40. All right, children. Uh, so, that, I'll share the, uh, the answers, which I have. Okay. All right, children. So, that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. Good luck. Kamlani uh, Ketan students have their uh, math uh, annual exam tomorrow. All the best. <clears throat> That's it for today's session, children. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Uncle Edmund. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Good night.